Uh, yeah, good day. Now, I feel it's high time we had a little talk about uranium. Now, as you may know, some time ago, Australia discovered that there was quite a lot of uranium lurking about immediately beneath the lucky country, and it was widely recognised that by disinterring the wondrous yellow hoard, we'd be able to keep ourselves in the manner to which certain of our number would appear to have become accustomed. Now, of course, this caused a good deal of unfavourable comment from various groups in society who were worried about the health hazards involved in uranium mining and the nuclear age in general, and, of course, the land rights of the nomadic denizens of the north. So the government decided to sell uranium only if the purchaser agreed to abide by safeguards and use the stuff for something called peaceful purposes. Now, since that time, several things have happened. The government has gone into several partnerships with people to mine and market the uranium, and the people they've gone in with are becoming more than a little disturbed that the government, which doesn't like government incursion into the private sector, is not only involved in the marketing on a government-to-government -government basis, it's actually in competition with itself in the form of partnerships it's in with other people. Now, aside from this remarkable practice of keeping the lace fairies at the very bottom of the philosophical garden, the other development is that in sharp contrast with the advanced publicity, it's almost impossible to sell uranium. Now, why should this be, I hear you cry, in your relentless search for truth? Well, as we at DigDag discovered some time ago, uranium is by no means a scarce commodity. Demand seems to have tapered off, and the malfunction at the now famous Harris Burger has deterred several of our brighter prospects. And of course, Canada turns out to be practically made of uranium. So all in all, the future for the Australian industry does not really look all that bright. As I say, though, we down at the offices of DigDag have anticipated this and have made other arrangements. Now, we are going to take a certain amount of flack about this. I don't deny that. Neither do I make any excuses whatsoever for our marketing division, which has, in fact, acted within the law at all times. We had a couple of hundred thousand tonnes of uranium, as a matter of fact, sitting around in the car park, and we had been trying to sell it for a couple of months without what we in the business refer to as any real success. And then one day, a character came in and offered us a very substantial number of ducats for it, and we fell into conversation with him. Of course, we asked him if he was going to use it for peaceful purposes, in line with the Australian government's extremely rigorous safeguard guidelines, and he said that yes, he was. And we asked him exactly what he was going to do with it, because above and beyond the guidelines and restrictions, we do, of course, feel a distinct moral responsibility to ensure that absolutely no harm should come to anyone whatsoever. Only persons of proven integrity should be availed of the awesome power of uranium, and it should be used only to benefit the whole of mankind. So he explained that he was going to use it to put on a truck, which seemed perfectly OK. And he even outlined that after its initial purpose had been effected, he planned to use it to put on a ship. And again, we were struck more or less immediately with the extreme peacefulness of his intentions. On top of that, he was a very nice bloke, Mr and Mrs Smith, and I must admit it came as a slight surprise to us to discover that later on he'd sold it to the government of Pakistan, who used it to make something called a nuclear bomb. I think we're OK, though. We didn't sell it to them, and if he chooses to unload it to someone else, that's his business. Nothing to do with us. I'll get out of your way now. I'll see you later.